right, money miners. They tell you, look at how far mostly I have come. Sacrificing BD for the show. We're not at the big RIU conference. That's what I'm doing for the money miners You're this a new year. man. I'm, I'm impressed, buddy. I would have been lapping it up otherwise, but, hearing all some bloody great stories. But, but hey. Buddy departed it. Was it, yeah, about pretty early yesterday after we ripped the show, about midday, you, you, you left, Matty, and um, JD and I sort of thought to ourselves, <laughs> he's gone. He's written off. Based on historical performance, he will be back at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Just, <laughs> just clocked on for a 16-hour so, you, shift. You beat both of us into the office this morning, so very, very proud mate, of you, Mate, when I thought that I might go down that road, I excused myself from the scene. <laughs> Bloody, what a new man. And, mate, tell you what today, what do we got, boys? Mate, strike did not strike. No. Down Duster. 20 odd percent. Uh, what else? We've got some gold mergers. We've got. We've got plenty of uh, presentations with the, the various. Uh, Company, mining companies? Yeah, Is that what's, the word? The, what's the word? Conferences going on. So, oh, yeah. you know, run through the, the highlights. We're, we're, trying got, to, we're trying to find the interesting takeaway on each presentation. Maybe, you know, the detail you might have missed. Exactly. We've mm-hmm. also got a bit of a bit more unfortunate news in the in the world of nickel that we'll touch on. And as well, a, uh, a favourite company of ours, Rex, we're doing a bit of capital oh, raising. sexy Rexy. Yeah, so we'll touch yeah. on how that capital raising went for them. Mate, and did you know, remember our milestone the other week? A million. A million views. Views and downloads, yeah. You know who else has just had a million views? Investor Hub. Investor Hub. The <laughs> Investor Hub. What a quite – how pertinent that a bloody great organisation like Investor Hub reached a similar milestone to money of mine. Mate, it, congratulations to the team. Yeah, well done. Is it a race to two? Ooh, <laughs> it's on, boys. It's on. Mate, and you know you know what's – like the number 3,000. It's yeah. not as big as a million. No. But 3,000 can have just as much value if those people are high net worth. And, mate, that is how many bloody high net worth people are on Investor Hub right now. And, Jesus Christ, apparently it is growing rapidly. So those are the those are the number of individual high net worth individuals who have signed up to the various Investor Hubs. Mate, they're just hubbing the shit out of it. They're loving it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, fun fact about high net worths. Tell me. They've usually got heaps more money than us. <laughs> <laughs> you can nearly guarantee they're going to have shit loads of cash, which means, mate, big money. Looking at stocks, yeah, that's what you want. It sounds like if you're you're the MD of one of these mining companies, you'd be crazy not to be using Investor Hub. Mm. Is that what you're saying, mate? Well, I'm thinking, JD, like if you you are an MD, maybe in a future life, like you want nice. access to the big capital. Yeah, you'd be mad not to. When I'm running a three million dollar explorer. <laughs> I need to get eyeballs on it. That's exactly (laughs) where I see you landing, JD. All all my cash is going to go to Investor Hub. (laughs) And and all their high net worths cash is going to come straight to you. It's a no-brainer. It pays for itself. Mate, uh, mate, isn't it just a complete offering? It's like like the sizzler of investor, new investor marketing and investor relations. It's like, mate, you got everything. It's like the Pizza Hut 595 all you can eat, but mate, top I don't think, quality. I don't think Sizzler's around anymore. Yeah, I oh know. That's because Investor Hub took over. <laughs> <laughs> that is why, mate. Controlled professional forums, direct access to management for the investors, integration of uh, CRM, integration of share purchase plans and capital raise support, just bloody integration. Bulk, bulk, Integration. We bloody love it. Plenty of mining companies getting on board. And, mate, they're differentiating themselves in this tough market via Investor Hub. Yeah. You Taking stand out. action, put forward. Fo- put the foot forward. You can stand out from the crowd in a big way. I really love when you click um, an announcement and it takes you to a, to a link on, on the Investor Hub and then there's a little video that goes with it. Mm. And, um, you know, sometimes some, some savvy MDs use... Uh, simple language to communicate the message of the announcement. Exactly. And, look, I just think it's a... if. We don't usually talk about the smaller companies too much, but the only way they're really going to get on the show is sign up with Investor Hub and we use a snippet of their page as a demo of of something. So if you want to get on the show or have a chance, get on to Investor Hub and you're in the running. That's it. Get in the show notes. Give Rory an email. Mate, branding 101. Mate, strike down 23% strike energy 
Bloody Oil and gas, mate. Eddie, Eddie Bell's here. You got ding, some... ding, ding, yeah. Oh, JD. Not, you can't not so be... loudly today, but... Yeah, uh... can't be good at everything, mate. Uh... <laughs> They're like the church bells that ring at a funeral. <laughs> Jeez, that was the, that was the <laughs> quietest... Think of that one for a while. <laughs> that was the quietest ding, ding, ding of it. Yeah, heard. very, very quiet. It was a bit of a duster, right? Do you want to mm. run through... Well, the South Aragala appraisal well failed to flow during the flow testing. Um, Because I'll put in a trading hole Friday and uh, before trade, came out this morning and look, God, there was some, um, there were, oh, first notice there was big volume on Thursday right at the end of trade and figure, oh, it's coming out of the bloody instos, what's going on here? But there's over 20 million bucks worth. But as you can see, the announcement at the start of the week, they were actually added to the ASX 200 because Costa Group got taken over. So the large volume was for the ETFs and indexes rebalancing. So, um now, it's been explained to me, this result is very unusual on the back of their, I guess, December announcement, like, because they they reported they had net gas pay of 13 metres with the reservoir pressures of 6,700 PSI, which is a bloody lot of pressure. I think, well, the bloody car tyres, 30. So <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a bloody lot a of... car tyres. That's a bloody <laughs> lot. So I think once, and from what I've been told, like, once the, the, the petrophysics... If it's like you know done correctly and everything, like it's expected to be pretty, pretty bang on, and it's ex- it was expected to flow out. But they said right. in today's announcement they uh, they've possibly intercepted a GWC, a gas water contact. So I guess you can it can be surmised that they've either they did not know they intercepted the GWC if the petrophysics wasn't done correctly, uh, or they were extremely close to it. Uh, and once they started the flow test, it's just pissed out water so they've pretty much got to remap uh remap the whole thing so they, they've got the se2 appraisal well flow test results coming soon they're going to start testing that in the next five days so yeah big big pressure on se2 coming soon it's it's up dip of se1 so not as deep as this se3 so i think if it's higher it might not be at the same risk of intersecting that gas water contact if it's there. So the implications of this result today is that I guess the market's reserve estimations of how much gas is at, is or was at South Aragala will be much lower, as you can see by the 20% share price decline. And and if you tie it into what's happening with the potential change in being able to export uh, onshore gas from WA, it would mean strike would possibly have less gas in total, so less gas to export because they'll have to fill, fulfill the domestic contracts first. So, yeah, mm. uh, after the announcement in December, it looked like, right, there's continuity, this is the field, uh, but it appears that might not be the case. So, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure if they can go back down it and if above the gas water contact or how all that works. Um, but, yeah, so time will tell. I'm not too much of a bloody oil and gas expert, but oh mate, you've done well then. And I mean, <laughs> Strike have got a broader portfolio, portfolio as well. They've got mm. you know, Perth Basin um, assets. They've got yeah, West Aragala as well as South Aragala. There, I mean, been waiting a while for that government update as well. That was expected to come in December, January time, the interim report. Yeah. And in the in the near term, in March from memory, we're expecting the the final report to come. So let's wait and see about that one. The number someone gave me today was like if if that SE three doesn't prove up it was worth about 12 to 20 percent of like the total reserves which is the nav the nav probably the nav (laughs) so yes interesting so wait and see what happens uh going forward sometimes things aren't as they seem (laughs) you would have put your left nut on that thing gun to flow eh, jd you you would have it was uh i mean it was the appraisal well right so it wasn't exactly what expect investors were expecting i think it came a bit out of left field for a lot of people so i might be a bit shocked by that one mm. right uh take it over boys My all righty investor done. investor <laughs> presentations let's uh fly through what we sort of found interesting not really much new information in these presentations that that come out most but of them have been uploaded to the platform without market sensitive um you know flagged on the on the on asx there, oh, so. so there'd be nothing interesting or new no in no there. no mate you just got to look with a fine eye and you'll find something interesting mm. go to the back page Rick Adinio, let's start with uh line town <laughs> yeah so line town i mean there was one line that was interesting to me there on slide six uh in quotation marks progressing smaller fit for purpose finance facility further update uh, uh to you know expected by the end of march quarter so i wonder if um if that is with the existing lender group or otherwise i mean we're paying close attention here 
We spoke this morning about some comments last night from Mr. Taviano in in the Finn that came out in an article late yesterday. Mm, very and punchy. Yeah, there was there was a couple of lines that stood out. That I think worth uh, worth repeating. The reason we need support for lithium is because it's not a mature market. So he's really really angling for government support in the in the lithium sector in WA. And another line that Woodmac had not allowed for lithium projects that would fall by the wayside or find it impossible to secure funding in their forecasts. So essentially taking another dig at those longer term prices that Woodmac have put, which was obviously one of the um, direct leading causes to them having their funding pulled. Is, there, is, is this the first example of a lithium company so far in this downturn asking for royalty and <laughs> tax credits? I don't know it's it's most, most of it's yeah. been nickel well, so far. Well, the, the emergency meeting, remember, was a lithium and nickel emergency meeting. Oh, it was meeting lithium as King. well. Yeah. Yeah, they right. were included to be in the doldrums there. But I mean, like... There were already. I mean, look at the, the the creditor group that was for the finance facility. There was a bunch of concessional finance in there. So, I mean, you're already getting a bunch of kind of free kicks from the concessional finance already. Mm. So, anyway. And it's already referenced in there that the uh, the relief some of these companies got in 2020 when lithium was in the doldrums as well. Yeah. Uh, the next company that stood out, Aeris. So, you know, sort of conspicuous by its absence, the, the lack of financial information at all. So you've got uh, numbers around... Triton, Jaguar, the various, you know, projects on care and maintenance and producing and all these sorts of things. But there was no real numbers about what's going on, what's the financial position. And it's, you know, it just feels a bit out of place given the market we're in, given that investors want to know they're not going to go into a company that's going to capital raise next week. You should at least put one slide around the financial position of the company. So I went back and just double checked again. They finished the last quarter with 22.7 in cash. But if you look through the the cash flow statement, 300,000 went out the door in operations, 26 million went out the door on CapEx, but 27 came in from financing. So they were roughly flat after doing a $30 million placement in the in the quarter. And mm. you have to bear in mind that they've also got 40 million in debt with Soul Pats. So they're walking a tightrope at the moment. Yep. Yeah. Uh, mate, this is a treadnought I've, I've pulled up here. This is a, a slide towards the back there. I've never seen this metric in an investor presentation before. It's brand new to me. <laughs> It's the average ASX announcements per week. I've never seen it. I'm not sure what to think of it. But in case you were wondering, Dreadnoughts is greater than one. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to... Mate, thank, <laughs> thank fuck for that, eh? Oh, news flow. It's all talk, news flow. Talk about a bloody overhang that's been on that stock for a while. <laughs> mm. Now, that was sitting at 0.7 mm. a while back and I just didn't like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the- I thought you were talking about the price end, but you're talking about the announcements per week. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> apparently that's been the big overhang. That This thing's probably going to shoot now that they're out. It's going to fly. Oh. Anyway. All righty, fellas. Uh, another one wasn't actually a presentation that stood out, but it was uh, results that came from Andover. Obviously, we're talking about Azure here. And first up, the headline, more impressive, more very impressive lithium intersections. The headline kind of makes me cringe. I want to think for myself. I don't know the company telling me what to think. That said, they had a hit of 113 metres at 1.63%, which is pretty solid. That is very impressive. It is very, very <laughs> impressive. But from 408 metres down, it's not exactly a, a shallow hole. So let's see what Gina and SQM most likely will, will do with that. Yeah. Um, yes, Stavely. So i got to point out this slide, slide three there, Deck. It's uh, what does Stavely offer that is different? And then uh, you can see on the slide there, big targets. And in case you were wondering, judging by this slide, the targets might even be bigger than Australia itself. <laughs> Just big targets. Very good. All right. Next up <laughs> Next up was Hillgrove. So they're a copper miner now. They can actually call themselves hey. a miner in South Australia. They announced yesterday their, their first production from the Canman 2 project. And in the, uh, in the presentation, the thing that stood out to me, it's hard to miss in one of the first few slides, is this massive big red mark circled around their franking credits and tax loss position. I had to double check. I went to an older report to see it wasn't an accident. There is actually a huge red line circling this. So they're very eager to show off their franking credits position as well as their tax losses. And that just screams out to me, take me over. You know, the tax loss position is twice the size of the company here. So yeah, I'm not sure sure what uh, other investors made of that one, but I think with the company, all the focus will be on production and in particular on exploration success, given that 
the uh, the plan was only for roughly 10,000 tonnes of copper per annum. Do you reckon, do you reckon while during the Prezzo they had the Peking Duck song playing in the background? Take me over. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> they, might, they, they might not be the only company. <laughs> take me to there's, there's some funny rules around, um, yeah, when you take over a company. It's not like you just can assume all of the tax losses. There's like an available fraction of them um, to do with what your existing operations are and how similar they are and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you, but can't, yeah, you can't, can't, can't assume the royalty either these days <laughs> <laughs> or the lack of. Matty, I've got um, I to I gotta talk about a deal today. Oh, I love talking about deals. Oh, we did a deal yesterday. I went to a pissy lunch. You edited the video. <laughs> that. Now, that was a good deal. Uh, oh, thanks, mate. No worries, mate. Well, um, we thought it was a slow news day today, but at 9.15 a.m. Perth time, we had this deal pop up to make it a little interesting. Now, there, there's always news the morning of conference starts, Matty. Um, mm. And, of course, these two companies are both exhibitors at the RIU conference that kicked off this morning. Just so happened to be a coincidence that the deal was announced this morning too. <laughs> so the two uh, gold junior companies are merging and um, we've got Horizon Minerals, ticker HRZ. They're merging with Greenstone Resources, ticker GSR, after both being pretty beaten up lately. Trav, do you know why this is such a good deal? It is. No. It is relevant to you and you've brought it up before. This might mean... They will change the name, and there will be only one Horizon you have to worry about. No, I think that, I think that's I it's all falling under Horizon. Was oh, there three? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I thought the same too. I was like, please, st- please, st- stay, change your name. But no, it's going to be Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so each Greenstone shareholder will, will receive zero point two eight six eight Horizon shares for every Greenstone share held, which equates to about an eighty nine percent premium to the last price for those Greenstone shareholders. But like I said, mate. Both of these companies have had a, had a tough time of late. Horizon are down 43% in the last 12 months and Greenstone down 83% in that same period, which left the two aspirants with um, $23 million and $7.5 million market caps, respectively, pre-deal announcement. The two companies both have um, some, some gold tenure in and around Kalgoorlie. You can see it on this map here. I've, I've gotten the, in the, the rich yellow color there is horizon and in the red there is is greenstone's tenure this is um in the in the investor present today now there are a few interesting angles to discuss in relation to this deal number one is um i think the financing dynamics around these companies which probably make make a deal happen in my opinion and number two is just you know, is this company actually going to be interesting with the two assets merged together and i've got i've got a take on that and that take may be what well mate on the financing dynamics to start with, Greenstone were down to their last $500,000 in the bank as at 31st of December. Um, and given how beaten up the share price has been, you can imagine like raising that money has been pretty tough. Um, and so when raising money is tough, you sometimes think a bit left field about how you're, um, how you're, how you're going to move things forward. And sometimes that's the motivation you actually need to get a deal done. And in the details of this deal, this merger today, Horizon have agreed to even provide Greenstone with a four hundred fifty thousand dollar loan to help them fund the costs of the merger, um, and that's just an indication of how tight things. Oh, have been chucking it on tick. <laughs> there you go. But mate, Horizon themselves uh, haven't exactly had had a seamless funding dynamics. Um, they've been offloading non core parts of their portfolio in recent history. In January last year, they sold their King West shares for one point three million in cash. In July, they sold an option on Yamani West to Metalhawk. In August, they sold an option on uh, Windana. And uh, Baden Powell to Dundas in October, they sold some ground to Northern Star for three point one million dollars cash and a royalty. So you get the picture there. And also underpinning Horizon's funding dynamics is a convertible note, mate. A bloody convertible note. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much I love convertible notes. Um, oh, the alarm bells go ringing <laughs> when a, a sub thirty million dollar market cap gets a oh. convertible note. Yeah. So this one's a, a US five million dollar convertible to Nabari. Nabari have got mm. a bunch of these floating about. Um, they executed the facility back in November twenty twenty two. The plan was, you know, to use the bulk of the proceeds from that to get some um, on, on some capital in order to mine their Canon project, which they put out a study on that around the same time that showed it could generate ten million dollars free cash flow um, at a lower gold price. So, all righty, mate. So, will the uh, will the company, the the Merge Co, be interesting to look at? It should be one that punters out there have on the watch list. I think the answer is nuanced, and my perspective on it is um, not yet. Uh, like Horizon, they've talked about being a producer for a long time, but nothing of substance seems to to materialise. You know, back in 2020, 2021, 
Um, I remember Horizon, they did a, a bunch of these milling campaigns for their Barara deposit, which um, doesn't get too much airtime these days. I think there's some met challenges with that project. And then shortly after, you know, a lot of the focus has been on getting some some cash um, from mining that Canon project, which you know, they've gotten approvals in place to do that now. So the addition of, of Burbanks, which comes into the picture now via this via Greenstone's portfolio, could make the value proposition a bit better. So Greenstone, they're, Greenstone have 466,000 ounces there at 2.4 grams per tonne. 168,000 ounces of that is at 4.4 grams per tonne. So a bit of sugar can move the dial if um, it is economic sugar. My, my gut feel is that the big opportunity for the pro forma relates to a key bit of infrastructure they happily point to in the merger presentation. Go back to that map, right? You see the one mill that they point out there in that whole Kalgoorlie region. There's plenty of mills in that region. But the one they point out there is the FMR Greenfields Mill. Piggy Bartlett's. Piggy Bartlett's. Burbanks is only 12 kilometres away. And Horizon themselves have the right to treat 200,000 tonnes of ore through that mill already. So, so like, I wonder if the merger will allow some dirt from Burbanks to be shuffled into that um, right to use the mill. Um, and perhaps Horizon would even want to own the mill themselves one day. But, like, I really doubt that they could ever actually buy that bit of infrastructure off P. Bartlett, who apparently has had some um, some pretty health, healthy offers for it in the past, which he's uh, knocked back. So, mm. you know, my, my view is until you own the infrastructure, you're a, a bit between a rock and a hard place there. So who's who else is nearby that there's a bloody – Bloody gold and shit everywhere around there. <laughs> who's uh, who's the neighbours, Ricardo? Mate, not too far away. That there are a couple of other mysterious ASX listed gold miners with colourful histories that one day I'm sure we will talk about. Uh, you got Focus Minerals, best ticker ever, mate. FML, um, <laughs> which which is basically just Shandong at this stage. Uh, they're commissioning the 1.2 million tonne per annum three mile hill mill in Coolgardi and uh, running stockpiles through it at this stage. There's also Beacon Minerals uh, mining their Geordie project nearby too, with a you know about an 800,000 tonne per annum mill. Both of those companies have links to you know Horizon or Greenstone or FMR in various ways over the years too, which um, one day we'll unpack, mate. Oh God, mm. the the battle <clears throat> for what, what is this area? Would you say Kalgoorlie? Coolgardie. Cow, cowboy the, gold mining in Kalgoorlie. Uh, <laughs> Slash Coolgardie. The battle for Coolgardie. <laughs> Good to see there's only going to be a board of four people as opposed to eight or something ridiculous. Oh, I did oh. see that slide and then I thought, oh, I wonder how that happened. And then I read that – so a lot of the um, Greenstone board are, are happily accepting the deal and not getting a, a board position in the pro forma, but all of their unvested performance rights are vesting. There's always a catch. Yeah. Always a catch. Right, sold. Sexy Rexy Minerals. Yeah, What's so going on here? we spoke about this one about a month ago, fellas. They were looking to raise 30 bucks on Jan 16th. Now, there was an interested group, MIE. They were going to take $12 million as a strategic placement. And we were pretty critical of this capital raising for a couple of reasons. So first and foremost was just how dilutionary it was going to be. They were just over a $100 million market cap company. And the second reason was the the use of funds we thought were pretty inadequate to sort of, sort of say the least. There wasn't much going on and 30 just seemed pretty excessive. So they've now completed the accelerated component as well as the retail entitlement and it didn't go great. So Instos, other than the strategic coming in, took only $1.4 million and retail took only $1.5 million worth. So oh. it resulted in the sub underwriter being MIE, that strategic investor taking a further roughly 8 million of stock. So all up, they raised just under 23 when they wanted 30. And the strategic investor slash sub underwriter, MIE, took about 90% of that. So it's worth noting, it's not totally unusual to see something like this when it's a strategic underwriter. You can think of MinRes when they were doing the raising or supporting the raising being done by Delta, shouldn't say they were doing it. But um, they definitely wanted more stock in Delta. That was very clear and they got a good bit in the end. So if it had been a a financial underwriter, i.e. a a broker, perhaps a a fund in some cases, I think things would have been much, much worse, but that wasn't the case here. So the last thing to note is that this group, MIE, they came out with an initial substantial notice after the accelerated component was done. That indicated they were now 12.2% shareholders. But with another 5.6 from the retail component going to them, you'd expect another one to come out in the next four or five days, indicating that they've uh, notched up that percentage holding in Rex Minerals. Mm, right, more 
Unfortunate news coming out of the nickel sector. Yeah, lads. yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get any prettier. So Glencore has announced that they are shutting down as well as selling a stake in the Coniambo nickel mine in uh, New Caledonia. So there's three big projects in New Caledonia. This being one of them. It's 49% at the moment owned by Glencore. That's a stake they're looking to sell in the entity called KNS. So it's very tough for the the community out there. Glencore said that they've funded more than US $4 billion since 2013 and they've never realised a profit on it. So oh. this isn't just a asset that's under the pump because of what's happened in the last few months. It's been under the pump for quite a while. Glencore flagged it last September already that they were only going to fund KNS for another six months coming up in this month in, in February and then uh, another decision was going to be made. The French government, um, they've offered to sort of provide support to the tune of 200 million euros. And that's, you know, you've got to bear in mind, there's the two other participants in in the country there that need support as well. But Glencore essentially said, even with that support, it's uncompetitive. So they are deciding to wipe their hands clean and, and leave. KNS had capacity for 60,000 tonnes of production. And perhaps interestingly for, for us in WA, it's worth noting that this is a laterite deposit as well. It's not a, a sulphide Projects. So there are lots of projects around the world being put under pressure by the nickel price we're seeing. And I think it would just be very interesting to see if any Chinese parties, you know, Xinjiang or anyone related in Indonesia, takes a bit of interest in this New Caledonian asset and, you know, perhaps wants to wants to deal with Glencore and take advantage of all that, that sunk capital that's gone in the ground. So there's obviously much more bad news coming out in the in the lithium space. We didn't speak about it, but last week the Avebury mine in Tasmania, uh, that shut and that had been on care and maintenance for the better part of six months, as well as BHB, you know, lots of articles coming about how they are just cutting costs all around and they've obviously got a huge decision looming around Nickel West. They've got West Musgrave, which they are putting in a lot of capital. They've obviously got the, the big half a billion dollar decision to make in, in Kalgoorlie. So... It's all coming to a head. Mate, their, their earnings uh, come out on the 19th of Feb, which is six days away. So, yeah, I reckon there'll be some juicy, juicy stuff there. Feels uh, like they've pre-guided with all of the articles in uh, various publications that yeah. <laughs> not going to be pretty. Yeah, I've, got a I bloody, right. uh, I've got an interesting uh, talking about earnings. Yeah. Bloody hold, hold on, bloody hold, hold just horses here. I can read all in the one day. You've got... Uh, Pilbara, Northern Star, IGO, Minres and Regis, all on the one day reporting. Is so the bloody analysts are going to be uh, on the 22nd. 22nd. The oh. are going to be busy that day. Oh. We'll be busy that day. Oh, is it strategic or is it coincidence? <laughs> oh, mate, there's no such thing as coincidence in money and mine. I'll tell you what, boys. Mate, God. Jeez, uh, I just feel healthier being here, I just want to say. Work, I could be in the doldrums right now. You're glowing, mate. I did get a late bait to the cricket tonight. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> right, hey, thanks to all the partners. Uh, the Verify, the team are in town. Give them a buzz if you'd like to... Uh, get a little showcase and we're having some drinks on Friday at Mayfair. If you're a company, not a random punter that wants free piss, come and join and RSVP. Uh, mate, Investor Hub as well. Legends. <laughs> Love them. Mate, DSI Underground, Smack Power and Technology, McMahon Mining Title Services, Anytime Exploration, KCA Site Services, Brooks Airways and K-Drill. Hooteroo, lads. Brilliant stuff. Hooteroo. Hooteroo. The information contained in this episode of Money of Mine is of general nature only and does not take into account the objectives, financial situation or needs of any particular person. Before making any investment decision, you should consult with your financial advisor and consider how appropriate the advice is to your objectives, financial situation and needs.